The chest x-ray is the most frequently performed examination in radiology departments. It can diagnose several conditions. Every health professional needs to understand how normal anatomical structures appear on a chest x-ray. It's also important to know the basic science behind how x-rays are used to generate images. When an x-ray is acquired, the x-ray beam travels through the body and hits a photo detector to create an image. Some x-rays are absorbed within the body. While some manage to pass through to reach the detector, the radio opacity, in other words how white, and the radio lucency, or how dark the structures appear on the image, depends upon the quantity of radiation absorbed or the quantity of radiation passed through the tissue. The more x-rays are absorbed by an organ, the more opaque or white the appearance of that organ. The bones appear opaque as compared to the lungs because bones absorb more x-rays as compared to the air within the lungs. The different organs of the body appear as different gray shades according to how much radiation they absorb. If two anatomical structures absorb similar quantities of x-rays, then it becomes difficult to distinguish them from the image. The most common purpose of the chest x-ray is to assess lungs, airways, and cardiovascular system. The large airways are visible on good quality chest x-rays. They appear darker as they contain air. The trachea branches at carina into right and left main bronchi. Bronchi can often be followed into the hilum as they branch further, but are difficult to follow beyond the hilum. Tracheal deviation to either side usually points to some pathology. The lungs are conical in shape. The upper part is rounded and is known as apex. The lower concave part is the base that resides above the diaphragm. Mediastinum is the central portion of the thoracic cavity containing the heart, aorta, major blood vessels, esophagus, trachea, and main bronchi. Normal lungs have a branching vascular pattern visible through them. The maximum diameter of the vessels is seen near the hilum. The vessels gradually taper as they branch and become almost invisible toward the periphery. The lungs are frequently divided into upper, middle, and lower zones by radiologists. Each lung is covered by a double-layered membrane called pleura. The cavity between the two layers of pleura is known as the pleural cavity. The outermost layer of the pleura is attached to the thoracic wall, mediastinum, and the diaphragm and is known as the parietal pleura. The inner layer, the visceral pleura, is attached to the lungs and extends into the fissures. Mesothelial cells produce and secrete pleural fluid into the pleural cavity that acts as a lubricant. The pleura is so thin that the outline is not visible on a normal chest x-ray. However, in certain conditions, you can see parts of the pleural layers. For example, visceral pleura is seen on this x-ray as the patient has a pneumothorax. The left lung is collapsed, creating a sharp outline against the air in the pleural cavity. Important mediastinal contours have been drawn along with approximate locations of cardiac chambers. You can see superior vena cava, ascending aorta, right atrium, inferior vena cava, aortic arch, descending aorta, Aorto-pulmonary window. Right pulmonary artery. Left pulmonary artery. Pulmonary trunk. Left atrium, left ventricle, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. A pathology in the lungs is easier to visualize as compared to the pathologies represented by abnormal contours or silhouettes. It is important to pay attention to all areas where the lung borders with the diaphragm, 
heart, and rest of the mediastinal structures, as well as thoracic cavity laterally. The presence of a mass in the mediastinum results in alteration of the contour without loss of the sharply defined border. So very important to know how normal contours should look. The mediastinum is divided anatomically into the superior and inferior mediastinum. The superior mediastinum contains airways, aortic arch, and its branches as well as the superior vena cava and brachiocephalic vein. Inferior mediastinum has the heart. Soft tissues and lung interfaces are seen as either. Lines or stripes, the right paratracheal stripe, for example, or as a silhouette. For instance, the silhouette is found between the right atrium and the right middle lobe of the right lung. By definition, the word silhouette means a dark shape seen against a light surface. Loss of these interfaces indicates the presence of lung pathology. For example, loss of interface between the right heart border and the lung may represent right middle lobe pneumonia. These silhouettes and lines are extremely important indicators of diseases, as they are either obscured or displaced as a result of many pathologies. Consolidation in the right middle lobe in this example has obscured the right heart border. This is right middle lobe pneumonia. There is another drawing with mediastinal and hilar structures. You should know these contours by heart. The hemidiaphragms should normally have a smooth, dome-shaped contour and should make sharp angles laterally, which are known as costrophrenic angles. The angles medially are known as cardiodiaphragmatic angles. Plural outlines are also drawn. This line represents the horizontal fissure and is an oblique fissure. Right lungs have three lobes and the left lung has only two. Frequently, on a normal PA view and rarely on lateral views, the horizontal fissure is visible as a thin line. 